So behind me is a Volvo XC40. It is the most interesting car that Volvo has, and it came out in 2018. It's based on the CMA platform, which if you are familiar with the X50 from Proton, that is based on the BMA platform. So it's sort of related, but this is not a hyped up X50. This is the Volvo XC40, it's a very interesting car. And I'm gonna tell you why, actually it's the best car in its class. So like I said, this is the most interesting Volvo to look at in their range, in my opinion at least. It doesn't fit the Volvo mold necessarily, but it's youthful, it's chic, quite stylish. At the same time, it looks, you know, athletic, like it's been working out, let's just say, despite it being a crossover and quite compact. And compared to its closest rival, the Range Rover Evoque, it's actually a great value because this comes in at 252,000 ringgit. 255, excuse me. And now with a sales tax exemption, you get it at 241k. It's really good because the Range Rover Evoque, the new one, is coming in at 427k. A lot more expensive. This is the most car you can buy in this class for the least money. So with the XC40, it's got the usual Volvo face, very square, very handsome, very Volvo, very Swedish. But it also has this, you know, Thor hammer lights. It's got a very nice sort of almost un-SUV, un-crossover-like face because it's so car-like, almost hot hatchback-like. Now, speaking of hatchbacks, this Volvo kind of looks like a hatchback. The, these atrocious uh, arches that have kind of like spread itself to all SUVs and crossovers, it's here too, but it's quite minimal. But you do get a very nice set of 19-inch wheels. It's even got Pirelli P0s on it which is a good thing and a bad thing because it's a very sporty tire, very sporty wheel, but not that much of a quiet tire. All right, so the XC40 comes in only a 2.0 T5 R design. T5 just means a two liter turbo four cylinder. R design, R design, is sort of like M Sport AMG line. It gives the car a bit more of an aggressive exterior package. So you get obviously the badges R design over here, on the side, if you can see it over there. And you have this spoiler, which wouldn't be here otherwise. It's a uh, R-Design element. Also, the chrome twin tailpipes with the chrome finishers, also R-Design. So it's sporty looking, like a hatchback should be, but it's a chic, youthful, funky crossover. And it's a Volvo. So the XC40 being a crossover, of course, has a big boot. Right? Right? Okay. Also, power tailgate with the kick operated signal thing. So over here, you have 460 liters of boot space. That's pretty big. Not the biggest in this class, but still pretty big. Also quite useful because you have this separator over here. So let's say groceries and nastier stuff, wet stuff goes over here. Luggage and dry stuff goes over here. Great. I counted that you have eight tether points, two over here, two over there two on the seats and two over here to like hang bags or whatever. And if you fold the seats down, and they fold flat by the way, and you have a flat load floor, so very easy to get stuff out, in and out. Um, but if you fold the seats down, you get 1,336 liters. Let me show you that. Inside, like the exterior, they wanted the XC40 to make a statement. It looks contemporary, like Volvos do, but with a few twists here and there. There's great visibility out front, first of all, letting plenty of light in. And they've even found new ways to use certain materials. So with XC40, it's a really, really nice place to be. It's like being in a stylish version of IKEA. Um, so with the seats, first of all, they have this really lovely... Um, sort of Alcantara, not quite Alcantara material. Over here, it's very nice. Micro suede, Napa leather, and perforated Napa leather. So you have this material blend. It's really nice. And coming to the rest of the interior, you have the usual, you know, piano black finishes down here, some metallic finishes over there. But what we also associate with traditional luxury materials, you have wood and leather. But it's mostly just soft touch materials, soft touch plastic. Over here, instead of putting in wood or something more boring, you have this aluminium inserted with 
um, matte black plastic. It doesn't sound very interesting or premium or luxurious, but it feels good, it looks good. That's what counts. And just look how much interior cubby holes there is over here. It's so deep. Over here we have this for trash. I'm not even sure what it's for. Two big cup holders over here. This little slot over here, which I'm thinking for change, but it can fit the phone perfectly. But I think my phone better go over here for the uh, wireless charging pad. I can put even like spare car keys if you have more than one car down there. Great. And so with all Volvos, you have this very robust set of uh, infotainment system tools or whatever you have. And with over here, you have a nine inch um, census infotainment system. So it's a huge diagonal touchscreen in the middle, which also matches with the 12 inch digital instrument cluster over here. Very useful, very sharp. And the thing is I have a pet peeve with most infotainment systems because it's kind of unintuitive and hard to use and really frustrating. But this one works really well. It works just like a smartphone. So however you're used to using your smartphone, chances are you're pretty well versed with using the sensors. And in fact, with a huge touchscreen, there's bound to be fingerprints, right? So Volvo even gave us a little cloth and some clear fluid. So you can just wipe it down whenever you want, whenever you get too many smudges on it. Ew. All right, so before we show you the back seats, let's just appreciate how well designed this door panel is. It's got so much space and it's been designed with storage in mind first, not just comfort, although it is comfortable. So you have the usual materials over here, but they've carved out this entire like cavity over here. So it's, and they've lined it with felt, it feels good. You can store a bunch of things over here. A big bottle down here, a few more bottles down here if you want, the owner's manual, manual if you want, touch and go, really anything you want. And that's really what sets this apart because Volvo really thought out of the box when it comes to designing the XC40 with how it's being used, how it's designed, and that really, really appeals to me. So this is Volvo's smallest SUV, SUV crossover, whatever. Um, but it's actually quite big inside here, huge in fact. Now this is my usual position for driving. I'm usually sit, sat forward quite a bit, so got a lot of legroom over here, lots and lots of headroom. Um, but the middle seat, you get cup holders, which is great, but that does mean that someone sat in the middle doesn't have a nice backrest. But if you're sat over here or on the left of the car, you get the nice same seat materials that leather and Alcantara, but not Alcantara mix. But inside here, some quibbles. I love that the fact that they have um, adjustable, you know, aircon vents over here is always great, but they're, they're over here by center tunnel, which is not so ideal. I expected it to be, being a Volvo, to be on the pillars, which will, which will cool my face, not cool my um, What else? Oh yeah. The windows don't really wind down all the way and you have this huge blind spot over here so it can get a little dark and dim inside the interior. But otherwise, great place to be. Okay, so what do we think about the Volvo XC40 to drive? This thing is like a warm hatch to be honest because if you're looking for an SUV that is, uh, you know, super comfortable, maybe the Evoque is more your speed. But honestly, this thing rides about 80% as good as a Land Rover, as the Land Rover would, but it's a lot more exciting in the bends. It just feels very tight. It feels very together, but there is some body roll, okay? It's quite high, it's quite hard to ground, so there is some body roll to be experienced. But if you do get yourself into trouble, there is all wheel drive to pull you out of it. So under the bonnet, there is a 252 horsepower, turbocharged, four-cylinder, two-liter engine, which is basically Volvo Corsa the T5. Basically, it's the T8 twin engine minus the hybrid part, just the petrol-powered part, all right? So, yeah, it's decently powerful. Zero to 100 in 6.4 seconds, all right? That is proper hot hatch territory. Really, it really is. It's like a Volkswagen Golf GTI that level of performance in a crossover and this is not even being touted as a performance suv this is just a normal volvo xc40 so for the money 
you get a lot of, of performance. You get a really, really fast SUV. What else can offer you that? I don't think the BMW, no, the BMW doesn't give you X drive for the same money. It doesn't give you as much power. Hmm. So this is shaping up to be everything in the Volvo's favor. It has the most power. It has all wheel drive. It's the best to drive as a result. I think, okay, look, the steering is a bit kind of numb and it feels like a Volvo, to be honest, it's not gonna blow your mind. It's an SUV, it's a Volvo. Steering is light, like I said. The response, no, doesn't exist. But it is accurate. So if you trust it, and you turn the wheel and you are confident that it'll be turning the way you wanna turn, then it'll be fine. But it doesn't really fill you with joy or excitement. But it is quick. It is quick. The transmission itself, 8-speed ISIN, automatic, it's pretty efficient and the shifts actually work quite well, the paddles work quite well, although the gear lever itself down here, it works a bit silly because let's say you want to shift gears using the gear shifter itself, you go into manual mode to shift up and down, you don't go, you don't go like that, you don't go back and forth, you go side to side, so right side is up and left side is down a little bit strange but anyway you don't have to use it you have pedal shifters so that's fine yeah look you have don't expect to drive like a hot hatch even though it has performance like a hot hatch it's really a warm hatch that's pretty damn fast and drives pretty well pretty well uh I really like it. It's a good balance, guys. It really is a good balance. Good job, Volvo. So I can already tell I'm liking the XC40 quite a bit. It's great to look at, very practical, decent to drive, pretty powerful, but is it really best in class? <sighs> so guys, what do we think of the Volvo XC40? Well, look, it is, I'll just say it right now, it's the best in class. It's got a combination of all the things that makes it a great, great proposition. At 250K, 252, 240, now it's 241, but normal price after one has SST added to it, it's 255K. At that price, it is still a great proposition because next to things like the Range Rover Revoke, uh, Audi Q3, Lexus NX, uh, X1, BMW, Mercedes-Benz GLA, all those things don't really, don't really match up to this car because the performance is great. It's so practical, so good looking, and it's so filled with tech that it's actually overwhelming. It's a great, great car. You should buy it. Best in class.